Greetings everyone. I'm going to talk about the speaker build project. I need to revive that project. But first, quick look at my old house here. My old room where I used to do the videos. This is where the bench sat. Had a computer here, recliner over here. A little TV right here. Lots of memories. I spent a lot of time back in this room. It's really a big utility room is what it is. But yeah, house is empty. It's on the market. Wish me luck. Hopefully you can sell the place. Okay. Back at the bench in my new house. You know, I measured this place. You know, it's just a big rectangle. I measured from front to back, inside wall, left to right, inside wall, 760 square feet. Well, here in America, you know, that's a pretty small house. The thing of it is, yeah, I'm kind of trying to be a minimalist, practicing minimalist. And uh, if I wasn't using the largest room in this house for a business, which is the room next to this one I'm in here. You know, what would I do with that room? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm comfortably fitting in the rest of this place. So, yeah, it's just food for thought, I guess. Okay, so let's get back to the project. So last May, I think it was, I did a video. I want to kick off a DIY speaker project. And I came up with this. You see, I wanted something that was bigger than some of these speakers I have. Like in that speaker shootout video I made. The largest speaker there was the Dayton Audio B652. Its internal volume is point, around 0 0.2 cubic feet. Around 7 or 8 liters. So I wanted something bigger than that, but something not too big still a bookshelf size speaker but you know not too large maybe around uh, just shy of a cubic foot in volume well this one came out at one cubic feet at 28 liters but after doing that video i did some more listening tests and measurements and with the the dayton audio woofer right here the dc 200-8 uh, listen to test tones and some music in sealed and ported enclosures and i just like the the sealed better sure the ported is going to give you more sensitivity and at certain bass frequencies but i just i really like the overall sound from being sealed so I was thinking, well, if I go sealed, I'll lose some sensitivity. Maybe I should go with a 10-inch woofer. And I was thinking of maybe two woofers, two 8-inch woofers, a woofer tweeter woofer. Then I have to buy two more woofers then. But the problem is this box is one point, almost 1.7 cubic feet, you know, about 48 liters getting very big that's bigger than these and these i mean they're not big speakers but much larger than what i wanted we're getting closer to floor standing stuff here um so i said okay stop 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 back up let's rethink this thing so what i want to do now is uh go with this design ported uh, I mean, uh, not ported, but take the go sealed, get rid of the port. And that will allow me to actually shrink the box size down a little bit. Uh, some other things I was thinking of is I was, you know, when I was looking at crossover components to make my own crossovers, looking for the bobbins and everything, I just, oh, the price of this stuff. Yeah, I'm probably going to spend the most money next to these drivers. On the crossover alone, because I need a total of four coils, four 
well, probably more six capacitors and maybe a couple resistors. Yeah, those coil bobbins and winding my own coils. I have plenty of copper for that, but man, it gets expensive. So I was thinking, well, maybe I should look at going active. So in the next installment, I'll talk about active versus passive crossovers and which way I decided to go. And also talk about the crossover frequency I've chosen. I did some tests on this woofer here, this the Dayton Classic DC 200. And it likes to, it wants to cross over at a lower frequency. So, yeah, I'll talk about what I found there. But anyhow, let's talk about the box size I need for this speaker. Well, there's something called QTC and you can calculate it or box modeling software will design around a optimal QTC and QTC comes from Q you probably heard it in resonant circuits I think they call it quality factor it's kind of misleading thing though maybe you know a higher Q number sounds better maybe for some types of RF work but with a speaker you're looking for more of a optimal value and that happens to be the inverse square root of two a number that often pops up in electronics 0.707 so the smaller you make the box the QTC value goes higher you'll get a peak and then the base will roll off faster if you go for a smaller than optimal box size so what we'll do is take a look at the software here and see what an optimal size volume for the cabinet should be. The box modeling software I'm using is WinISD. Yeah, I must have downloaded this thing like 15 years ago. Over the years I've entered the TS parameters for several drivers so I can play around and I've actually designed a lot of speakers off of it and always come out pretty good. So I have the Dayton Classic DC200-8 in three scenarios. They're all sealed just to see the response curves here. So we have the software's default with the QTC at 0.71 and with that we need a box around 0.87 cubic feet and I adjusted for a smaller box size of 0.3 cubic feet to see what a QTC of 1 would look like and conversely much larger box size for a QTC of 0.5 and with this driver to get down that low I need 4 cubic feet and <laughs> that's just ridiculous for a small 8 inch driver but yeah, it's just a scenario to demonstrate what the response curves looks like. So the yellow line here is the optimal QTC at 0.1, or I'm sorry, 0.71. And this purple line is the 3 dB down point, as they call it, F3. And it's around 50 hertz. And course the base just rolls off from there so that's like I say that's the optimal it's a nice roll off so now let's say we squeeze the box size down to what was it 0.3 to get QTC of 1 so what's happening here with the green line we're getting a peak and it's not bad. I mean, it's a couple dB. It peaks up. And then it rolls off. But you see here, we lose lots of re uh, sensitivity. You know, this is this vertical line here is the 40 hertz line. And look how much we've lost there. You know, with in room gain, I expect decent response at 40 Hertz but with such a small box it's gonna hurt severely 
And if you make the box too small, of course, this becomes even worse, and this peak becomes higher, and you end up with what I call a boxy sound. With this driver, we're getting a peak around 100 hertz, and that's where you get that boxy sound. I just don't like that. Okay, so then the other scenario is to go with a very low QTC of 0.5, and that requires a ridiculously large box, and that's the light blue line here. You can see it rolls off even smoother or slower, but you can see we lost about a up to a dB of of uh, sensitivity here. Our f3 point is actually higher; it's around 55, and the sensitivities are equal around 43 here with the optimal QTC. But you can see here we do gain some response. However, it's so little it just does not make any sense to use such a large box so yeah that, that's the scenario so yeah that's the three scenarios now let's just say we want to go with a slightly smaller box than optimal okay so what I want to do here is compare a box size of 0.6 to our optimal box size of just under 0.9 and a 0.6 box gives us a QTC of 0.8 and our 0.8 QTC is this green line and see it's still pretty close you do lose a little over a dB which is not much around 40 Hertz our F3 point is virtually the same. So, you know, that's the nice thing of sealed drivers. You can have a little room to play there. So if your box ends up a little smaller than optimal, it's not going to kill anything. It's just when it gets, you know, much too small. You know, what I'm going to do is go with a box size of around 0.8. That's very slightly under this and you know a lot more than this still so it's you know it's virtually the same oh well, my battery quit on the camcorder so hopefully I didn't lose anything okay so if I go with a, a box size of 0 0.8 QTC is still very good in fact with the optimal line they pretty much overlap there's no way there would be an audible difference there. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, so now that I know the internal volume of the box I'm going to use, I figure I'm, I'm using 3 quarter inch thick MDF. I come up with a new box size. So I widened it because if I kept it at 11, then the depth of the box would have ended up close to 11 and you don't want two sides with the same length because you have standing wave issues plus I didn't want the box to be so deep and you know, before it's 12 and a half inches you know front to back and I wanted to drop that down somewhat so I widened the width of the box shortened the height of a box a little bit and the depth of the box uh, two and a half inches less and so that's what we end up with here I didn't redraw this yet of course it's going to be sealed now so what do you think good way to go any thoughts on this any ideas leave it in the comments so in the next installment I'll talk about the crossover points and why I chose what I did and active versus passive crossover which direction I'm going to go with that and uh, I guess we'll leave it at that thanks for watching